Welcome to part five of this DIY electric go-kart series. Where we left off last time, we had trialed the 400 farad Eden supercapacitors in parallel with the battery pack. We had some good and bad things come out of this. On the good side, the supercapacitors were better able to deliver high current to the motor controller, resulting in a faster acceleration. However, they also became a parasitic drain on the battery pack only a few seconds after discharging and the small battery pack I was using suffered some serious heat and a small amount of damage. So in this episode, we're going to construct a crude battery pack out of some way more powerful cells and see if we can get some improvements out of this go-kart. So I received plenty of suggestions for a new battery pack, and one in particular turned out to be the SPIM 08HP. These batteries are available for purchase from Battery Hookup in the States, and I purchased 28 of these for a 14S2P configuration. Now, these are very powerful cells, supposedly removed from Chinese prototype buses. They are rated for a continuous discharge without damage of 200 amps, but can also pump out 400 amps in short bursts. The batteries didn't take too long to arrive in Perth, and here's what they look like. The first thing I did was take a measurement of each cell's voltage. Most of them were at 3.6 volts, however a couple were a few hundred millivolts less, but still within spec. After taking some size measurements, I started to wonder how I would put these batteries together. This is what I came up with. So here is one of the pouch cells. I took a second one and put it in parallel with the first. Then I repeated that a bunch of times. Now I can flip every second battery so that they can be joined in series. After rinsing and repeating, I have 14 of the cells in series, with each cell having a parallel cell. Next, I had to figure out how to connect these cells together. The middle tabs are not really long enough to be able to join together, so instead, I used some conducting material to take up about 15mm of gap between each cell. I used aluminium square tubing that has a wall thickness of 2mm. However, I will acknowledge that copper would conduct better, I just didn't have any readily available. Each piece of square tube was marked and center punched, then I used tech screws as the method to fasten the battery terminals together. Others have been successful with nuts and bolts or even rivets, but this way worked well for me. You'll have to excuse the poor footage here, but basically I used some capped on tape to provide a little more isolation of the conductive parts of the cells and screwed them to the aluminium spaces. Then I placed some stick-on foam between each layer and screwed the battery together in series. There is also tape on each of the spaces to stop them shorting against one another if they happen to get squished or anything. What I ended up with is kind of like a concertina of the batteries. I know this is crude, but I was really keen to try them out and this was a quick and non-permanent solution. After joining them together, I wrapped them up in some duct tape. Again, it's rough, I know. And for testing, I strapped them to the cart. To charge them, I had to use a really slow method, which was connecting the charger to one cell at a time and charging it at 10 amps, which was the maximum. This took seriously like 14 hours to charge the pack, and even then, I don't think it was properly full. I'm going to purchase a BMS for this pack, so for now it's just primitive charging. Well, I think that covers how I made the new battery, so let's see how it goes. For the first run, I was really interested to see how much current the battery would supply. So I set up my clamp meter and recorded it. Sorry about the crackling audio, it was really windy.
Well, that was good success. We drew around 330 amps, which means we've topped out the maximum current of both the motor and the controller. So that's a big win. And man, it absolutely flies. It's so much fun to drive. To find out how fast it can go, we took it to an industrial area at night, which had smoother roads and no traffic. Here's the top speed run. Brett, you ready? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Here's a screenshot from the GPS, and we got 70 kilometers an hour. That's pretty fast. So where to next? I have plans to implement a BMS, and we still haven't tried this new battery with the supercaps, so there's plenty to come. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll catch you guys on part six. Cheers for watching.